This is Community Matters on 92 Gold. If it matters to you, it's on Community Matters. Good morning, I'm Aaron Mee, and you're listening to Community Matters here on 92 Gold and 1043 Kinzu Country. Today on Community Matters, I'm going to be speaking with Lee and Scott, members of the Warren Area Society of Paranormal Investigators. And we're going to be talking about everything from their equipment to their techniques to some of the places that they've been able to check out in Warren County and the surrounding areas. So stay tuned. How did the Warren Area of Society of Paranormal get its start? Do you want the short version or the longer version? Oh, we can do the long version. You want to go into the whole local food factory or? Uh, we, we work together at a food processing plant here in town. And as I recall, you were watching Ghost Hunters at the time, was it? Ghost Hunters. Yes. 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 And he got the idea from that. Wow. Hey, we should form our own group and start doing this. Yeah. Um, little fun note. We, we had a different name originally, but it was quickly voted out because it didn't sound as professional as the current name. <laughs> oh, we were really? Go what was by, that? We were going to go by Warren Area Haunting Association, or Waha for short. <laughs> but <laughs> I they, like it. The rest of the group didn't think that it sounded, it gave that professional edge to it. So, mm. and I, we kind of agreed. Looking at the different places and stuff around the area, what do you think was your first, you know, inspiration of this is something in our area that we can cover that these people on TV aren't covering? Well, there was a local group to begin with, but it just seemed like one group wasn't enough to cover Warren County. So we talked it over and we decided at that point that we could help out just as much as anybody else in the area. You know, when you're looking at some of these places now, have you gotten called to go investigate anywhere in particular? And then how do those things usually go? Are people going and contacting you or do you hear about something and you reach out to the place? As a general rule, they look us up if they have an issue and they, they'll go on the internet and they'll look for groups and they'll find somebody local such as ourselves and contact us and we do a follow up with them. Of course, you know, we hit some of the fun local spots uh, in the area, say like uh, Rimrock and uh, Guernsey Hollow up in Prusburg, New York. I don't know if you've ever heard of that place. A few little odds and ends. Wow, that is so neat. So, you know, with that being said, what are the the things that you use? And, And when you're going into this, are you going into this as a paranormal skeptic or a paranormal believer? So like if you were to go to one of these places, is this a situation where you are trying to disprove that there is something there? Like say, oh, well, the cold chill that you're getting is from the lack of insulation or something. Or would this be a situation where your goal is to prove that there is something there? Like what is the angle that you'd like to take for it? Well, there is a combination uh, within the group of skeptics and believers. I think more believers in those mid-range. Uh, Lee here is our resident skeptic. <laughs> well, um, I'm a skeptic to the point when, when it comes to evidence. You know, it's like, I'm not the one that's going to say every little bump and sound that you hear is paranormal. You know, it's like, nah, you got to prove it. Like, I, I, I fully believe there is something out there. And we do go into the place looking to not discredit, but to find the cause behind the bumps and the cold chills and such. And then when we cannot explanations. Uh, right. And then when we're not able to, then we start looking at paranormal side. Wow. That's really interesting. So, you know, when you're going into these places, what are them? Just a common thing that people don't think about. EMF, electromagnetic fields, EMF. Um, those cause quite of your classic symptoms of what people would consider a haunting from cold chills to paranoia, the feeling like somebody's watching you. It just kind of plays with your, with your brain. That's a lot of that's from poorly grounded, uh, you know, shielded, shielded, shielded wiring, elect- electricity, yeah. We we had one case, we of course are not going to say names and such, but we had one case with a little girl where the, the clients contacted us and said this child was in fear and didn't want to sleep in her room and always saying that she was hearing things and such. Of course, we rushed right in, especially being a younger child. We tried to get those cases to the top. And uh, when we walked into the room with our equipment, our electromagnetic field detectors just went 
straight to red. It was just horrible. It was like what they call a fear cage. What are the types of equipment that you use when you're you're looking at this stuff? I know you mentioned the electromagnetic field detectors. What do those do? Pretty much as it sounds. The uh, most common ones have about four or five lights on it from no energy being green to yellow to red. And then as it gets closer, a lot of times if you go around your electrical outlets, your microwaves and such, I'll put it towards the yellow or red. Um, that's one device we use. Of course, voice recorders and such, uh, cameras. Um, we're working on setting up our, it's called a SLS camera, which is basically a Kinect camera for your Xbox, hooked up to your laptop or tablet or whatever, and uses the laser grid and such to map out anything that might be there. We're kind of working with software, trying to get that up and running. Uh, your favorite thing is a spirit box, right? Oh, boy. <laughs> I'd say that it just he hates that thing. Oh, um, so so what is a spirit box? You want to describe it? Other than oh, you you go ahead. Remember this <laughs> this is radio. You yes. can't say too much. <laughs> but uh, spirit box is basically a modified FM AM radio. You know how when you push the button, scan to get to one station to another. Well, they took the stop feature out of it, so it continuously scans, and they amped it up to where it's like I don't know exact numbers, but it, it scans like hundreds of stations within a second to build up like a white noise sound. And then spirits are able to manipulate it to speak through. And I personally believe I've gotten some evidence with it. In theory, that's what it's supposed to do. In theory, you're right. Um, Everything we say is not 100% proven, of course. (laughs) Even some people still don't believe. You want to tell them about the time that we were accused of using CGI? Yes, we were on an investigation at one point (laughs) and... And I am the world's biggest skeptic when it comes to orbs. Like, it's dust. You know, that's all it is. Most dust, of the time. You know, most of the time, it's dust or an insect that just happened to get caught by the light. As The way we had our camera set up this in this particular case, we could follow this thing going from one room to the next to the next. It went underneath the door, and then it came back out the door and went into another room. It's like, like it was moving with purpose. Like Correct. it was looking for something. Well, we put that on our site, and yeah, we had some remarks. People accused us of using CGI to produce this video footage. Wow. <laughs> a little, a little, or, you know, we said to ourselves, if we were going to fake anything, it, it would be a little more grand. Yeah, you, you'd be saying a full figure operation here. <laughs> <laughs> we might edit down little clips so people don't have to watch five hours of paint drying, but <laughs> that's about the only editing we do is cut it down for time. That's for sure. And, and you know, I found, I'd say at least 80% of the time, people that, um, do the computer stuff is pretty general saying, oh, this is for entertainment and such. A lot of times it's not as rampant as you think it would be, I, I guess is what I'm saying. Curious to learn a little bit about some of your creepiest experiences or occurrences. So when you sit down and you think of all of the the different uh, investigations that you've been a part of and the different things that you've been able to see, what do you think is an experience that really stands out? I mean, I know we just talked about the one with the orb moving through the different cameras, but is there anything that you've had that you've experienced that maybe you didn't catch on camera or something that that we didn't catch on camera? Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably that's the one case that we... We try to be professional when we go out and do stuff, you know, and just jumping out of a vehicle and taking pictures of people just tends to rub them a little raw. So do you want to say it? Or? Uh, we were at Guernsey Hollow. We, we arrived in two different vehicles and everybody that was there witnessed us. You know, I made the remark, you know, okay, everybody be on your best behavior because we have company up here. Everybody saw an older couple walking hand in hand through the cemetery in their Sunday best. It was a Sunday afternoon, as a matter of fact. Right. And if you know Guernsey Hollow, the, the entire cemetery was surrounded by like a five foot high spiked wrought iron fence with one way in. There was right. one gate, and it's in the middle of the woods. Yeah, everybody saw this couple walking through the cemetery. There's a small hill you have to climb up before you get into the cemetery, and climbing up that hill we lost few of them by the time we got into the cemetery they were gone just completely disappeared and we're, you know we're not going to say that it's totally out of the realm that they climbed over the spike <laughs> wrought iron fence in their sunday best and wandered off into the woods but it's highly unlikely 
It's possible, but not probable. We no, say you're that. right. That is, that is a crazy experience. Wow. And, and I've never heard of someone experiencing something like that there. But, you know, I will say, and, and I've had an opportunity to be there in the past. And the one thing that I wanted to ask about that, and, and it relates to it a little bit, when I was there, I had a cell phone on me that had a full charge when I arrived there. And for reasons that I can't understand, it died in my hands before I made it up to the cemetery. Oh, okay. Now, is there anything that would cause that to like it will a large spike in EMFs or a change in that possibly drain a battery like that? Generally what they say is uh spirits, ghosts, whatever you'd like to call them, um, will use the energy off our devices and such to uh, power to give them more energy to speak and be seen and such. So cell phones, flashlight batteries, things like that, cameras will oftentimes drain out there's been times where i've seen online because i read more social stuff than he does on the computer people are say their car batteries drained and things like that people put salt around their car there just to keep from things happening to it <laughs> that's definitely not out of the the realm of the paranormal is batteries draining within seconds <laughs> what do you think are some of the more well-known destinations in this local area i know you talked a little bit about rim rock a little bit about Guernsey Hollow at the beginning. Um, I understand that there's a couple up in Jamestown, the Lucy Ball Theater. I've heard a little bit about. I've had a couple people give me their own opinions on things there. Is that possibly haunted? According to a group in Jamestown, that's. Um, I don't think they would mind me saying their name. And I'm not sure if you mind, but Jamestown Paranormal, the founder of that is Mike Polero. And he does investigations up there quite a bit in, in there and says that he found quite a bit of stuff. They're in the, what's that called? The Spire Theater? Mm, Spire, yeah. Spire by the post office. Yeah. Those are two of the places there that kind of get a lot of attention. As far as what goes on there, I'm not 100% sure. But of course, you get the uh, local things in Warren, like the uh, Jefferson Tea House and the County Courthouse. The County Courthouse. He, he worked there. He got activity there. Really? Wow. What do you think are some of your biggest challenges that you see in an investigation? Have you ever had a place that has seemed really interesting that you've just either not been able to go to or, or different challenges that have caused uh, an investigation to stall? Well, of course, this past year or so has been the pandemic, of course. One of the couple of things that like that happened was like, uh, is that the tea house on second and uh, market? Yeah, Jefferson Tea House. Jefferson Tea House. We tried to get in there some years ago, and I found the reasoning why they didn't want us there quite entertaining. And I don't mean to throw anybody under the bus, per se, but uh, they said when we went there that uh, they didn't want to be known as being haunted. <laughs> you know, and I, I kind of chuckled. We kind of chuckled because it's in the paper almost every year around this time of year that there's birds there. Historical society brings it up all the time so yeah there's a lot of places that I don't want to be associated with the library with, with the with the uh, paranormal they they're uh, I believe a lot of times it's because their fear will affect their business negatively but I believe and I'm not sure if Lee believes or not but nowadays I believe that's an attraction oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. No, yeah, you're right. 100% right. There's a lot of uh, places making serious money off of You know, how many haunted bed and breakfast do we have around? You know? like, I was yeah, actually just about to mention can. that. Yeah. Are you guys familiar with the Lizzie Borden case from a, it was in, this happened in, I believe the city, it was Boston, Massachusetts in like the mid 1800s, but the actual Lizzie Borden house where she killed her family with an ax is able to be rented for $300 a night. <laughs> and I'm not making this up. Someone sent me the link to it earlier this week and said, can you believe this? It's insane. Are you going to take them up on that? Uh -huh. You know, I find it really fascinating, but uh, I don't have the kind of money that they want to, uh, to do that. But I, I, to be honest with you, if I had the opportunity, I would love to be able to go through and do one of these investigations or learn a little bit more and see it. Are there any particular investigations or sites that you want to investigate or take part in? Uh, I forget the name of it. I think it's called Lep Castle in Ireland. The big castle. It would be wonderful with all kinds of activity. And uh, they've been on all kinds of paranormal shows for 
for activity from Ghost Hunters to Ghost Hunter Internationals. I believe uh, Ghost Adventures has been there. So that's that's probably worldwide. Suicide Force in Japan. Ghost be, Adventures. He's the one who's always trying to provoke. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's, yeah. one thing, that's one thing we don't do within the group is to provoke and challenge because, you know, what what does Dale like to say? Oh, thanks for letting us invest, investigate. Have fun with your demons <laughs> as we pack up and leave. Because, you know, we just challenged them and got them all riled up, the people. <laughs> well, and, and that's the thing that I always found fascinating. Because when you're doing this and, and you're in there, do you worry about the fact that, like, there are the possibility that, you know, one of those... Uh, what is the likelihood that something like that could attach itself or, or remove itself from the house? Is that a possibility that you have to worry about or? Oh yeah, definitely. Yes. Um, there's always that possibility that because even though we're not actively provoking them, but by being there, I believe we're kind of provoking them because, you know, we're kind of challenging their validity and such. So we do have a member that's capable of handling that. Wow, that's really important. Yeah, we won't go into the full name, but um, he's he's our go-to call guy. You want to tell him about the first case that you were on? If you got time. Uh, it wasn't, oh, yeah. We weren't actually doing a case at the moment. It was like a pre-investigation interview. It was myself and two female members of our group. They were going through the apartment doing base readings. They were upstairs. I was downstairs talking to the young lady, and during our conversation, she said she felt like her back was on fire. About that time, the two members were coming down the stairs. They lifted the back of her shirt, and we watched as scratches, welts were forming on her back, like sets of three, like claws going across her back, scraping her, and just formed out of nowhere in front of us. Yeah, redder and deeper as we were there. And she was in front of them for, for what, a good 10 minutes or so? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately or fortunately, depends on how you look at it. Part The other group, part of the, our group was doing something else that wasn't quite as exciting. <laughs> so. so, you know, with that being said, and you experienced that now... Um, so what is, where does the responsibility of that lie after that? So, like, now... Would that be on her to now find that would be up like, and I don't know if an exorcism is the the right term for this. If there's another thing that's not as intense there, before it gets to that or. There is exorcisms, of course. Um, I don't believe that case is actually warranted that. Um, no. I recall the way, the way we do it is we, of course, get the pre, we get the initial contact. We do a basic interview where we go through questions like, have you had stuff like that happen before? You know, what's going on? And then uh, from there, we go set up and do the investigation. Well, during the investigation or even during the interview or anything, if something presents itself that we don't feel comfortable with or definitely something a little more extreme than just the normal bump in the night stuff, we get all of our member Dale. He comes over. He's been doing this kind of stuff worldwide he travels he's or he has traveled i don't know if he has recently but anyways he and then he comes over and discerns it and sees okay is this something more than what he could handle or so so there is a process for us now unfortunately there's teams out there that don't have that capability which is kind of sad because if things do get bad then they could find themselves in a whole world of trouble um, yeah. there is dangers in this. Um, I, I hate to sound so dramatic, but there is an inherent risk. You never know quite what you're dealing with. Is this a human spirit? Is this an elemental or a demon? Uh, we did contact him that night, and he was there within 10 or 15 minutes. And he and the client went through the building 
Advanced Disposal is pleased and proud to be part of the Waste Management family. Waste Management offers amazing benefits, stability, and career advancement right here in our hometowns. You'll be home every night. We are now hiring CDL drivers and diesel mechanics with a $5,000 sign-on bonus. Candidates with a minimum of one year of waste industry experience are eligible for up to a $7,000 sign-on bonus. Waste Management cares about our team safety, and we show it by demanding solid safety practices of all of our employees pride safety training growth opportunity industry leading benefits and rewards check us out today waste management may be the company for you apply at careers.wm.com or call us at 814-299-4984 for more details okay so you want news and weather on demand that fits your schedule you want local news, eerie news, lots of news, making you one of the best informed people on the planet, or at least in Pennsylvania. You need to know how to dress the kid in local news in real time. It's free. Streamed on Roku, SPTV, Apple TV, and your pick. Or watch on Channel 35.3, Erie's 24-hour news and weather channel. Erie News Now Plus. Community Matters on 92 Gold. No, we were outside, so I, I can tell you exactly what happened inside, but she hasn't had any issues since that night. So Our situation is one season, Bob, we kind of step back. We're there if he needs the extra hands, but other than that, we don't really further the investigation because for us, it's not out seeking fame and glory. For us, it's trying to help those that are scared and in need. Now, when you're doing these investigations, is there a preferential time? Like, is it easier to do at night? Is it harder to do it at night? night i know on the shows they tend to do it at night is there a reasoning for that it makes for a good uh good filming yeah, it's <laughs> more for atmosphere um like the well like he was saying with the couple at guernsey hollow there that was a bright sunny day yeah. um so full daylight pretty much we do do a lot most of that night that's what the clients seem to prefer um if for some reason we're unable to find something that night or something's not quite finished, um, we asked them to start taking down notes and journal of what times things are happening and such so we could more tailor it to the case as opposed to, okay, we'll be there at 9 o'clock Saturday night. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Nice deal that line from The Conjuring, too. Well, it's not a jukebox, is it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. true, though. So, you know, with that being said, and you look at some of the movies and stuff that are based off of these pop culture things that are like, you know, pretty significant. When you look at these, how similar do you think they are or or how misconstrued do you think they are to what people really experience in the line of work? I think that the most accurate portrayal and the most serious one would be Ghostbusters. <laughs> Ghostbusters? <laughs> Who are you going to call? <laughs> uh, no, I'll get it inside. Uh, <laughs> uh, I believe the original Conjuring was pretty close to how things were. I think as that series progressed, it, it kind of went more into theatrics than, than uh, otherwise. But yeah, the, the original keep Conjuring. making money off of this. Let's make another movie. You know? right. mm. um, I, believe they're, I believe they're pretty accurate. Actually, one of the things that I do now once in a while is uh, from that movie, and that's uh, hanging, door, uh, hanging bells on the doorknob for if somebody's reporting that they can hear the door handles or whatnot. Just simply put some string on a bell and before you know it, you can hear it. <laughs> Curious, have you, because Ed and Lorraine Lo, um, Warren were the uh, main characters of the Conjuring series and, and they're real people that you know really did this in real life. And obviously right. the movie was based on that. Now, I understand that they actually had created a sort of museum based around some of the pieces and artifacts that they've brought back. Now, with that being said, do you think that some of those artifacts would have either a spirit that's associated with it that you'd have to worry about? Or do you think that when it leaves a house, it could be cleansed of that? Or, or I guess, are they two separate things? I personally think that what's in their museum, if you believe what they report, it's continuously being blessed and prayers being said over everything to keep everything contained there now as far as if it's done correctly in my opinion a house being cleansed or whatnot they just they do go wherever they need to go to yeah they move on to the other spot however you see that now if it's done improperly i feel 
that they will attach somebody or they'll just find an object and move on to a different location sometimes. Do you I feel about the same? Or? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see the point of having a priest come in every month and know well, if, if you were doing it right in the first place. Why, why do you have to keep The Warrens go. Their museum is, there's supposedly some pretty powerful stuff there. Yeah. Now, the most interesting thing, now that you bring up cars, cars. <laughs> um, happened to me and his Lee's niece and my girlfriend and son at the time. Oh, he's still my son. <laughs> uh, we were visiting a little unknown cemetery in Jamestown that has, it's a very small cemetery and believed to be a lot of kids buried there. So anyways, uh, we went there in, in our car one night. We didn't want to get out. It was not the best weather and we weren't too sure of the place. So we sat in my car and I hooked up a FM transmitter to broadcast carrot box over the car stereo. And we went through, we got some interesting comments and such on it, but nothing that would change history. <laughs> it's only a $7 piece at Walmart. And uh, so to make it a little bit of a shorter story, after we left that night, our car stereo started acting up. It would change stations on its own. It would turn up the volume on its own. It'd be completely off. We'd get out of the car, come back in, and it would be on blaring loud enough to hurt your ears. Now, it also had one of those security plates where you take it off. It's not supposed to play. It's a security device. Well, guess what? It still played. <laughs> so oh, we, took, that's creepy. we took the car to a local garage and kind of told them the situation because, you know, it was annoying. Mm -hmm. And about an half hour or so later, they called up and said, hey, your car is ready. We get there. And they said, uh, we can't figure out the problem. Please don't ever bring it back here again. We're kind of wondering if maybe something attached itself to the car. Because after our uh, member Dale blessed it, he, he was kind enough to bless it for us. We never had a problem with it again. But <laughs> yeah, And that's the so, thing. So speaking of attachment and going places and such, yeah. I mean, it doesn't all have to be like pea soup spitting out and such. It could be minor inconveniences like that. <laughs> In my house, I I have an old toy that I had used when I was a kid, and I packed it away in my basement probably, I'm going to say at least 12 years ago, maybe 15 years ago at this point. And I mean, it's been a while. So I was downstairs about three weeks ago, and the toy was running, and it was on, and it was beeping, making noises, and everything. The thing hadn't been touched in years, <laughs> like decades at this point. Original batteries are still in it. I is there is there a, a possibility that like spirits can you know I, I mean we've talked about using energy from other devices to give them more energy is That's it a it. run a, move get out don't go back someplace <laughs> today <laughs> um sorry you cut you off no, no you're fine but yeah like does it work in reverse like that or it can see to me spirits are very capable of Wait until the last, to the right moment to mess with you, you know, kind of play mind tricks with you. So to them, time, I, I assume since I've never been a spirit, time is not all that relevant to them. So if they sit downstairs for a couple months and say, hey, I'm going to play with this toy. What's your thoughts? Well, the thing that gets me is that he says this has been packed away for years. The batteries should have been dead. <laughs> just even off of discharge. Yeah, from just yeah. Storage. That's that's strange. Did you take it out and look at it? I did, yeah. After that, I did. And and that's the thing that, that really freaked me out because I flipped it over. Same old, you know, the, the Dural ass like uh or whatever, the, the green and black or not the brown and black batteries, like the copper old top. Yeah. Mm hmm The copper top ones and then Did you have uh fond memories with that toy? Is it was it a special toy? You know, Thinking back on it, I do remember like using it and playing with it quite a bit. It was a uh, so basically it was like a little tiny magnetic like fishing pond that would like go in circles when the battery was on it, and you just oh, okay. put these little and magnetic drink. fish in it, and yeah. Sometimes, and I don't know if you would agree with me or not. I assume you will, but sometimes our loved ones come visit us, and those even those that we aren't aware of, family from way past will come and visit say hi and kind of show and that could have been their way of saying i'm here wow. so no, no, the dead batteries that goes back to the electronics uh with no power source that are functioning the laser grid oh yeah 
another fun night that was. That that's the one night that uh we got the door closed and nobody was watching the yeah the they were camera. watching the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Really? But, uh, the laser grid is why he's speaking of. You want to go ahead and. Well, was it before or after? It was during the setup. During the setup? Okay. We had the laser grid out. It had, we hadn't even plugged it in yet. And for no reason at all, it started flashing the laser. The laser started flashing from it. And it's like, no power I'm source. Looking, it's not even plugged in. Uh, how is this producing light? There's no power source to it. It hadn't been plugged in for months. <laughs> <laughs> that night was pretty interesting yeah um we during setup we were upstairs in, in this on second floor and they were still setting batteries in the two ways because same thing we were saying with your phone is uh batteries happen to drain so at the start of every investigation we replace batteries and put new ones in and such to kind of give us a chance to be able to use our equipment mm -hmm. so we're upstairs I was in the hallway. He was in one of the bedrooms and setting up security camera. And I walked through, well, I walked from the room to the hallway and I was just, I turned around to say something to Lee and the door closed in between us. Now there was no camera on me, so I could have been dragged away to. Who I turned around there. and I'm looking at the camera and I'm like, did you see that? And of course, nobody was paying attention to the <laughs> monitor. So and then as, as luck would have it, the, we, we lost the evidence. Yes, during during video review, as we were watching everything, a storm rolled through our area and wiped the hard drive of our security set system. Oh no! <laughs> At least it wasn't like the the biggest proof in the whole world we've ever had. Yeah. I mean, door closing is nice to get on camera, but it's not yeah. like uh, it's not like a uh, oogie boogie coming out saying hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, some of the local places, um, mm -hmm. maybe one of these days you can come along on a remote broadcast or something. <laughs> I'd love but to, yeah. One place that Lee likes is uh, Morrison Run. Yeah. Really? About halfway up the hill. We've gotten several things there with uh, being there, but Lee was the one that turned us on to that location from a camping trip from several years back. Yeah, that still kind of creeps me out. Really? I was up there several years, I'd say probably 15 years ago now. <laughs> Time flies. Me, me and, a, and a friend of mine, we were up there for a weekend camping trip. It was getting pretty late at night, so we both decided to go to our tents. Well, I crawled into my tent, and I turned on my dome light, and I zipped my tent up, and I'm rolling out my bag, my bed, mm -hmm. and I heard a woman's voice outside of my tent talking to me. It called me by name and said, I can see you in there. I'm thinking, okay, my buddy showed up and brought a companion with him, and I, I was a little annoyed. You know, it's like, yeah, you couldn't have showed up 10 minutes ago, could you? <laughs> I unzipped my tent, come out, and there's absolutely nobody around anywhere. And I, I heard this woman's voice clear as day, as, as clear as I could hear your voices. Wow. And there was absolutely nobody there. I wandered around for about a half an hour looking, and nobody. My buddy the next morning, did you hear something out there last <laughs> night? I said, uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. We were coming back from, it's once funny. again, Guernsey Hollow. Because when we first started this group, you know, there wasn't a lot of people asking us to come over. We didn't have a uh, presence known in the area. And so we'd go to local cemeteries and such, Guernsey Hollow a few times. And so on the way back, it was me lee and ursula sitting in the back of the car we're up front i was driving we get by the uh, russell cemetery mm -hmm. uh, coming through russell we hit the four corners there i don't know the the intersection name but we hit the four corners there heading towards warren and kept looking over at lee because i heard mm -hmm. something after after a couple after half of probably 15 times looking at him he looks at me and goes what i said did you hear that he goes, hear what? Mm -hmm. And before I thought about it, because I, I've been picked on ever since, I said, I just heard somebody say boo. <laughs> <laughs> of, of all the things for a ghost to say <laughs> or anything, this body voice to say is boo. Whispered in his ear, boo. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been picked on ever since that. Uh, really? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Come on>. oh. <laughs> boo. Boo. <laughs> 
That's um, awesome. Well, you know, yeah. thank you guys for uh, taking some time to talk to me today. It's been really cool to get an idea about everything that you guys are involved with. It's it's so fascinating to learn this stuff. And there's definitely a lot more. Is there any investigations that you guys have either coming up in, in any time soon or ongoing? or? There's a place that I've been looking into, um, and I mentioned it to the group. Sometimes we all kind of look up our own places. Other times cases find us. We have a YouTube channel if you don't mind me plugging is youtube forward slash ordinary site paranormal and our hundredth video is coming up and so i've been looking at a place in ohio called the inspiration house it's a bed and breakfast it has its own little occult museum and you have full access to the place for the night three or four bedrooms and if i'm able to get that secured quick enough We'll do a live feed on our YouTube and um, our Facebook account. Wow. And so everybody will be able to join in and kind of watch for us. And that's in the work. Another place we, we're looking into is uh, the Hinsdale House. So we got a couple of locations. Unfortunately, these are pay places, but these are the ones that people like to watch more on video than the three or four hours of us in a cemetery or something. Thank you, uh, Scott and Lee, for taking some time to be able to talk to me today. It's really been nice to be able to highlight the Warren Area Society of Paranormal here, highlight what you guys do here in the community, and then be able to talk about some of the cool cases that are local that you know are, are really pretty interesting. And you guys have given a really intense and insane background that I hadn't anticipated learning about just into all of the devices that you guys use, the way that you guys go about collecting this information and deciphering it. It's been really cool to be able to learn about, and I'm really thankful for the opportunity. Well, thank you for having us. Thank you for listening to Community Matters. If you have any questions, inquiries, or suggestions, feel free to reach out at warrenradio.com and click contact. Advanced Disposal is pleased and proud to be part of the Waste Management family. Waste Management offers amazing benefits, stability, and career advancement right here in our hometowns. You'll be home every night. We are now hiring CDL drivers and diesel mechanics with a $5,000 sign-on bonus. Candidates with a minimum of one year of waste industry experience are eligible for up to a $7,000 sign-on bonus. Waste Management cares about our team's safety, and we show it by demanding solid safety practices of all of our employees pride safety training growth opportunity industry leading benefits and rewards check us out today waste management may be the company for you apply at careers.wm.com or call us at 814-299-4984 for more details